The Mythic Plus meta is about to see massive changes in 10.2. Now that God Comp is finally dead, we have a few new contenders fighting for the S tier spot. Will Disc Priest dominate the ladder with its insane damage output? Will there be any potential sleepers taking the meta by surprise? Today, we will be going over the biggest winners and losers in the new patch, including some wild card specs that could see some huge payoffs later this season. We're also going to be giving away the BlizzCon Legendary Pack, so if you want to win, be sure to stay tuned for instructions on how to enter. But before we start, we have one huge disclaimer. Like all of our videos, this was made in collaboration with players from Echo and Method, which means our tier list might skew more for pushing higher keys, but we've tried our best to balance out our list to be representative for everyone. The S tier is what we expect to be the strongest specs for every role and capable of pushing the highest keys. The A tier is what we also expect to do quite well or will be the most popular, but with a few more weaknesses. You can think of the B tier as being average, and finally the C tier is what we expect to be the weakest specs for every role, so don't expect the mid and low tiers to be on the front page of the leaderboards. With that said, let's kick things off by looking at the biggest winners for tanks in 10.2. First up is Vengeance Demon Hunter, who got a massive rework in the patch. This included a few quality of life changes and a pretty hefty list of damage and survivability buffs. One of the most game-breaking changes includes a new talent called Illuminated Souls, which gives an extra charge to every Sigil spell. As we all know, having multiple AoE stops is a huge benefit in Mythic Plus, and the ability to silence back-to-back -back gives Demon Hunters incredible mob control in the new season. Combine all of this with passive DR against a pretty common form of damage this season, and Vengeance is looking to be the premier tank for any key level. Despite things looking up, there is one elephant in the room, Havoc. As we will cover in a bit, the Demon Hunter rework includes massive buffs to the DPS spec. While class stacking isn't super detrimental to groups, it does mean less value for class specific abilities and buffs, which is a common theme that we will be repeating throughout this video. But in any case, DH is looking pretty good on the tanking side and might actually be the best tank at the start of the season. Vengeance won't be alone at the top and there are two other tanks making some big gains. First up is Prot Paladin, which might be seeing similar numbers compared to earlier this expansion. Anyway, Prot was a huge winner from the tier set lottery this season, getting some passively stacking damage reduction, combined with some big dam on Consecrate with the two-piece, and pretty hefty damage and healing bonuses with the four set. These new modifiers fit in perfectly with the design of Prot Paladin as a whole, who is known for having enormous control over runs, combining impressive damage with an uncontested amount of utility and CC. The only question is how viable Paladin will be at the highest keys, since its survivability can be an issue when up against massive damage. Our last tank on the winning side is another sword and board hero, Protection Warrior. Warrior has a somewhat similar two set to Paladin, offering up to 10% reduced damage taken while active, which can further be buffed by the four set, which also includes some CDR. Combined, these set bonuses will make Prot Warriors do some impressive damage both for single target and AoE, with Thunderous Roar likely being up for almost every pull. With that said, 10.2 did bring a pretty significant nerf to Rallying Cry, which included a removal of Inspiring Presence, leaving a bit to be desired on the utility side. Even though there might be more spell damage this season, that also means more mechanics to cheese and reflect, which is always fun. So overall, you can't go wrong with Warrior Tanks in 10.2. While their utility and mob control isn't quite as good as the other high tiers, they are still living up to their role as a true tank. Not all is up in the tanking world, however, and we have one spec making a nosedive in our rankings. Despite being one of the five pieces of Exodia, Guardian Druids aren't looking quite as appealing this season. This comes after some key nerfs to Rage Generation, including the loss of the Season 2 tier set, which will put a dent into the survivability of our bear friends. Even without these nerfs, Guardian would have likely fallen behind other tanks anyway, especially considering it now has one of the worst tier sets, while other tanks have gotten massive buffs. To wrap up the tanking meta, let's reveal our wildcard pick for Season 3. Taking this title is Blood DK, which could wind up being a high performer for one huge reason. 10.2 obviously brings with it a new legendary weapon, and what do you know, Blood DK is the only tank that can make use of it. Now, it's unclear what the effect will be, but some have speculated that it might mirror a mechanic from the final boss of the tier. When you combine a new legendary weapon with tier set bonuses that offer 20% increased damage, Blood DK might wind up being a huge pumper this season, something which could potentially make the spec meta despite having a relatively awkward utility kit. While they might still be a bit limited at the absolute highest keys, Blood DK should definitely not be slept on this season. And with that, we have our predictions for the upcoming tank meta, with Demon Hunter, Warrior, and Paladin being the likely standouts for Season 3. 
Now, we know we didn't cover Brewmaster Monk, but it's honestly looking pretty good too, with the main consideration that it needs to be played very well in order to truly be high tier. With that in mind, every tank is in a good spot this season, so if this is your main role, then you are sure to have a good time. Speaking of having a good time, if you want to enter our giveaway for the BlizzCon Legendary Pack, then be sure to subscribe and join our Discord using the links below. There you will find a channel called Giveaways, where you can fill out a simple form to be entered. For now, back to the video. Moving on, let's dive into the melee meta, starting with the biggest winners. If recent history has taught us anything, it's that reworks have the potential to make specs insanely broken. Coming off a massive rework in 10.2, Havoc Demon Hunter is well positioned to be a titan in the early season. Some highlights include knocking 60 seconds off the cooldown of meta, bringing it down to as low as 2 minutes, which is joined by a second charge of Immolation Aura, which alongside other damage buffs should mean Demon Hunters will absolutely pump on the meters. There are also some quality of life improvements on the defensive and utility end, including buffs to darkness, repositioning Netherwalk on the tree to make it more accessible, and finally turning Fell Eruption into a baseline ability. Altogether, Demon Hunters will be extremely high value for most groups, especially since they have one of the strongest damage buffs for 5-man content with Chaos Brand. Joining Demon Hunter at the top of the melee food chain is Outlaw Rogue, with Rogue being the second class to receive a massive rework. Both Outlaw and Sub are definitely looking strong, but the Pirates might have pulled away with more gold. While its tier set might not be the most flashy, it does help solidify the spec as a beast when it comes to consistent damage, and now will have even better burst thanks to some new talents. One of these talents include Crack Shot, allowing rogues to spam between the eyes while in Shadow Dance, or for a few seconds after leaving Stealth or Vanish with the combination of Subterfuge and a new talent called Underhanded Uppercut. These combos will wind up being a huge source of rogue damage, offering a pretty significant burst window for every pull. Rogues are also picking up some very niche utility, with the ability to AoE blind, which will primarily be used as a stop, but in theory could be combined with Blackjack for additional AoE damage reduction. This would mean dropping tricks of the trade, but could be a fair trade-off in some cases. Normally, we would have a loser section for melee DPS, but honestly, there hasn't been that much downward movement on our tier list. So instead, let's look at some wild cards, starting with Feral Druid. Feral hasn't had much of a reputation in Mythic Plus this expansion, but could wind up being a really good option for the next season. This comes off the back of some pretty good set bonuses, which give Feral Druid some much needed single target damage to complement their AoE output. But with other changes to both Balance and Resto Druid, Feral has some obvious competition with the Mark of the Wild buffer position, if class stacking is something you care about. By itself though, Feral is likely going to be somewhere above the middle of the pack for melee DPS. With better damage and a solid defensive kit, Feral is looking far more competitive this season. Our next wild card is relatively similar in design, Assassination Rogue. All three rogue specs are looking good after their rework, but for a while it seemed like Asa might be falling behind in the Mythic Plus rankings. But with last minute damage buffs to some core abilities, Asa might be in a much better position than previously expected. Historically, the main drawback of Assassination is its relatively slow ramping time. But a rework to Indiscriminate Carnage could give the spec more utility with AoE Garrett's applying damage reduction on pulls. It's hard to say whether this and the Blackjack tech we mentioned earlier will become meta, but on paper the combo represents up to 45% damage reduction when tanks are generally the most vulnerable. Our last wildcard melee is Arms Warrior. During the PTR cycle, Arms and Fury have seemingly gone back and forth as the premier warrior spec each with their own unique strengths and weaknesses. With that said, ARMS was on the receiving end of some pretty significant damage buffs, which could help it pull ahead of Fury on the meters. The advantage of ARMS and Keys is more consistent AoE damage, where Fury can seem more cooldown reliant, especially when you factor in their new tier sets. While Warrior doesn't have the best utility, it does have one of the shortest interrupts in the game, and when combined with Spell Reflection, could come in handy for cheesing some casted mechanics in the new dungeon rotation. Anyway, with that we have our complete melee tier list for the new patch. Havoc, Demon Hunter, and Outlaw Rogue will likely be the standouts in the early season, but could be challenged later on by any class capable of wearing the Legendary Axe. If it provides a big enough damage increase, then it could definitely help offset the lack of utility from Warriors and Death Knights. Speaking of which, Unholy also got a decent rework, shifting damage away from bigger cooldown windows for more sustained damage, but we don't expect this to magically fix the spec for Mythic Plus. And finally, although we didn't cover them extensively in our breakdowns, the melee hybrids will likely be in a good spot next season, possibly even Windwalker Monk, who on top of some general monk changes are also getting some decent damage buffs. But with melee covered, let's move on to ranged DPS, starting with the biggest winners. First up, Augmentation of Ochre, a spec with a massive list of nerfs this patch, so how could they possibly be winners? We know that this spec has been enormously controversial, and we totally understand why, but for better or worse, Augmentation is just structurally too strong for high keys. 
Now, with this priest and Mistweaver Monk looking strong and the possible rise of blood decays, augmentation will have some added value with the ability to double dip on damage to healing transfer. In any case, we don't really need to say much more. Augmentation is just too good. But with that out of the way, let's go over our next winner, Balance Druid. Druid was another class that got a mini rework in the patch, which included several quality of life improvements. One of these changes included merging the wild mushroom talents, which should make it easier to keep up Waning Twilight across multiple mobs. The spec was also simplified slightly with Rattle the Stars being redesigned into more of a passive buff rather than be stacking form of maintenance. This, among other changes, will help lower the skill cap of the spec significantly. Changes aside, Balance was already in a really good spot for Mythic Plus prior to the rise of God Comp in Season 2, but now that the Overlords have been defeated, it might be time for Balance to rise the ranks once again. Structurally, Boomies are solid picks for most comps. With the best raid buff in the entire game, combined with great damage and unique control options, Balance is quite flexible. While survivability might still be an issue for higher keys, the spec is likely to do incredibly well this season. The final winner we will cover today is Beast Mastery and Marksmanship Hunter. As a whole, the Hunter class gained new utility this season with a revamp to Hunter's Mark, which now adds a damage modifier while mobs are above 80% HP. While this might not be as universally impactful as the damage increase provided by Demon Hunters and Monks, it is still independent of damage type and will work especially well into encounters like Iridicron, who stays high on HP for the entire fight. While Hunters might still be lacking in mob control and utility, BM more than makes up for it in sustained damage. With a new tier set that directly supports more AoE damage, BM Hunters might be able to overcome any shortcomings in their existing toolkit, especially for the average key enjoyer. The Marks tier set saw a last minute rework at the end of October, which will allow them to do some pretty nasty AoE damage, but doesn't translate super well for single target parsing. Despite having impressive damage and technically being in a better overall spot compared to last season, both BM and Marks will likely be overshadowed by other high tiers who simply offer more utility, better CC, and a more rounded defensive kit. With that said, don't sleep on Hunters in 10.2. With our winners sorted, let's move on to the single biggest loser for the patch. This title belongs to Shadow Priest, one of the pieces of Exodia which seems to have crumbled the hardest. In case you didn't hear the news, both Power Infusion and Mass Dispel saw some pretty significant nerfs in the 10.2 patch, which might initially seem minor until you factor in the new Shadow Priest 2 set, which seems to favor a build centered around Mindbender, and the 4 set, which gives a huge stacking modifier to Shadow Crash, something that looks good on paper but might actually feel a bit awkward to use in actual gameplay. While Shadow Priest was obviously a staple in the Season 2 meta, its dominance seemed directly connected to the relative strength of God Comp and was simply one gear of a relatively complex machine. As a standalone spec in 10.2, Shadow might encounter some unique struggles, especially since some new dungeons feature undead mobs, rendering their main AoE stop useless without a strong ranged kick to compensate. To wrap up ranged DPS, let's take a look at two wild cards for Season 2. First up is Arcane Mage, which could wind up being a huge sleeper going into the patch. While mages didn't see any major reworks, Arcane did get a pretty interesting tier set, which causes Arcane Missiles to cleave, which looks more like an Overwatch ultimate rather than a WoW ability. Anyway, Mage in general always seems like an appealing choice for Mythic+, Plus, offering good damage, control, and tons of options to cover survivability. While Arcane still might fall behind fire in overall performance, we might see some impressive damage numbers from the spec, especially in higher keys where the spec has more time to benefit from its damage ramp. Speaking of ramping, let's talk about Demo Warlocks. The patch included some minor reworks for all Warlock specs, but Demo might be a clear winner for Mythic+. Plus. Changes including shifting damage away from Tyrant and Demonic Portal to other sources, which just like Boomkin should help level out its complexity. While these changes might make Demo feel better in practice, the Warlock class does feel a bit limited when it comes to pushing the highest keys. For the average player, this might not be an issue, but unlike other Warlock specs, Demo can't even play with Imp Dispel. And although gateway skips can be fun and health stones are quite useful <coughs> when people actually use them, Warlocks generally feel clunky to fit into some groups given their weaker mob control. In any case, it's going to be hard to predict where Demo falls in our tier list, but for now, it seems to be somewhere in the middle of the pack and definitely in a better position compared to last season. And with that out of the way, we now have our complete predictions for ranged DPS in Season 2. Once again, despite some hefty nerfs, we really don't expect augmentation to go anywhere anytime soon. We expect most ranged spots to then be taken up by balanced druids or mages who continue to offer a ton of utility combined with some impressive damage. But when tier sets become widely available, expect to see hunters putting out some pretty impressive numbers. Unfortunately, we will be seeing some specs fall behind, especially Shadow Priest, who just doesn't have the best tier set for 5-man content. Now that we've covered DPS, let's wrap things up with our biggest winners on the healing side. 
First up is Disc Priest, who saw a pretty big rework in the patch. The most notable changes included removing a lot of bloat from their rotation, simplifying the spec while still being able to output some impressive damage. Shadow Covenant was changed from being an active spell to passively activating from Mindbender casts, possibly encouraging a build based around Mindbender CDR, which synergizes well with their new tier sets. The only caveat is that this build does require a lot of uptime and the ability to precast, which can be difficult on some encounters. With that said, Disc Priest is likely going to be a standout healer in the early season, especially with a Swiss Army Knife of damage reduction CDs. And now that Shadow Priest and Holy Paladin might be falling off a bit, there will be even more flexibility to build groups around Discipline. Overall though, with the highest damage in the game among any healer, Disc is looking very good in 10.2. Our second big winner from the patch was Mistweaver Monk, which was another healer that got a major rework in the patch. This rework included some damage and healing buffs, including a pretty significant 40% buff to Vivify, which along with the tier set, should make spot healing much easier for monks this season. Healing Elixir was also redesigned to act more like a pseudo-cheat death type effect, auto-procking an instant heal after dropping below 40%, with the ability to stack twice. This comes with another buff to the bounce back and calming passives, which should help some of the survivability problems monks had in previous seasons, especially with some of the new trinkets being added this season. With Augmentation of Ochre likely being strong in Season 3, the damage-based healers are looking pretty hot. While monks might lack the utility of Holy Paladins, they continue to have some unique passives that make them pretty valuable in five-man formats. Speaking of Holy Paladins, they will be one of the only healers moving down on our rankings for Season 3. Holy Paladin should still be competitive, but will be noticeably weaker compared to its peak in Season 2. Ironically, this is partially due to a nerf to a trinket you are probably familiar with, Rashok's Molten Heart. This item received some very heavy nerfs with the patch, which is a problem for Paladin mana bars. Holy also got a mixture of healing buffs and nerfs, which included an 8% nerf to overall healing, which will hit Holy Shock, Tears, Deliverance, and Glimmer of Light the hardest. But some of these healing nerfs were simply meant to shift more HPS into Holy Prism and make the spec feel less reliant on Daybreak Windows with more casted healing. While Pallies will still be one of the tankiest healers in the game, Sanctified Plates was hit by an astounding 40% nerf, which might just be a dent in their armor, but will definitely make them less forgiving overall. To summarize, Paladins will probably remain in the higher tiers for Mythic Plus. Having some of the best utility in the game is a strong selling point for the class overall, but Holy will definitely feel weaker in most keys. To round out our biggest healer changes, let's wrap things up with our two wild cards. Preservation of Ochre saw a few changes in 10.2, including some last minute nerfs to the new tier set, which makes them more reliant on RNG, but with overall buffs to Living Flame, spot healing should be much easier for Evoker this season. With that said, preservation might be hard to predict. On paper, it is a very high value spec for Mythic Plus, with some of the best AoE damage out of any healer combined with a unique utility toolkit and tons of control. Cauterizing Flame will once again be a high value asset in this season's rotation, and with Demon Hunters potentially being the best tank, Oppressing Roar will have some insane synergy with AoE stuns and silences. Our final wildcard for the healer role is Resto Druid, who are seeing their healing profile shift more from Treants to actual Hots. This was due to a pretty significant nerf to Flourish, which now has a shorter cooldown, but is significantly less effective, which might be a problem in higher keys for dealing with big AoE damage. On the bright side, Resto got an astounding 90% damage buff to Wrath and Starfire, which suggests a shift away from a cat form playstyle in favor of a Boomkin damage profile. Just in time for those fancy new customizations. Anyway, Druids are shaping up to be in a better spot overall, while Flourish might not pack a big punch anymore, the combination of buffed HOTS and a bursty tier set could help alleviate any issues from the HOT based healer. Anyway, with that we have our predictions for the healer meta in 10.2. This priest is shaping up to be a dominant force in the early season, coming off a series of buffs and some fancy new tech that simplifies its rotation. On the lower end, we aren't expecting much from Holy Priest or Resto Shamans. Even though Shaman got some last minute changes on the PTR, it still seems comparatively weak to the other high tiers. But we want to hear from you. What are your predictions for the Season 3 meta? Did you see any standouts on the PTR? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, be sure to enter our giveaway by joining our Discord and give this channel a follow if you want to see more Mythic Plus content. For now though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.